All right, Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today, diving back into the matchups, reacting to the game last night. And let me tell you, this this fantasy face-off season, I'm enjoying every minute of it. Uh, I can't say the same for my friend Jason. You do not want to miss the Wheel of Shame today. Make sure you click the subscribe button below. Join Mike on Sunday Live. Don't miss it. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Friday, September 22nd, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back at you. Fresh off of that Thursday night football game. Everything went according to plan. A lot went according to plan. I mean, uh, Brock Purdy looked a little shaky early on. Yeah. And the Giants continued to look shaky all the time. Yeah, I butt Purdy. He got right back to his two touchdown average. It's just what he does, man. He throws two touchdowns, not more, not less. Yeah, usually he. he um, you know, I I tweeted yesterday. I thought it would be a a committee of sadness in New York in the backfield. I'm looking for the first time. Like I knew Matt Breida got into the end zone, mm -hmm. which I was like, ah, oh, maybe maybe that was that was the wrong take. No, four for seventeen. <laughs> he had four carries. Mm -hmm. Same and then as Bri Gary Brightwell, Brightwell had four carries. But so Gary just, Brightwell got five yards on his four carries. So the, the Giants ran the ball, a to, including Daniel Jones, a total of 11 times. The The San Francisco 49ers ran the ball 39 times. Never seen a more unhappy Christian McCaffrey manager than Mike Wright last night. <laughs> no, he scored no, for was, the 12th straight game. No, no, I was all right. I was just – it's the usual Christian McCaffrey of just – just a shoelace away from a monstrous week. I mean, it was a really great week. <laughs> like so, I said, the, so the most selfish, the most discontent. I thought it was about the Elijah Clear. Mitchell eleven. No, 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 no. Rushing full pause. opportunities. All you two are telling me right now is you have no Christian McCaffrey yeah, that is, anywhere. Yeah. That's all you are saying. <laughs> Everyone out there is relating to Mike, who has McCaffrey, but Elijah Mitchell back out there. Yeah, turd, get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> Not 100% he, of snaps for Christian McCaffrey. So sad. Mitchell looked great. And, like, honestly, for the short week, Elijah Mitchell should be in there getting some carries. Debo. <laughs> so fun to watch him play football. Six for 129 on 12 targets. Had a touchdown. Oh, it was uh, – oh, that was not a 40-yard touchdown, though. That was no. a 40-yard reception. Bummer. Yeah. I was looking for. I was getting greedy with my bonus. Al, <laughs> you uh, you you played against Debo last night. Yeah, you got a nice head start this week. And Jason, you said you played against Debo in a lot Everywhere. of places. Everywhere. I'm <laughs> in funny nine. How that happens? Sometimes. I know it is. I'm in nine <laughs> leagues. I think I'm playing against him in five, maybe four or five leagues. It's like it so was four a, or five times twenty plus 22. points. You, you got a hundred burgers last night. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. But like like Al said. That's just uh, they're off to a good start. That's right. That doesn't mean that they're going to win. George Kittle, nine targets, seven for 90. Nice game for him, mm -hmm. which was uh, regrettable for me. I'm playing against Brooksy in the Dynasty League and have CMC and thought I got away with it. And then Kittle, he had a nice second half. This is usually what we have seen with the San Francisco 49ers. When one of their main options is out, the others are really good fantasy plays. So with Brandon Ayuk sitting... Debo was good. Kittle was good. And it's funny because it feels like every single season in the draft season, we talk about like, well, these guys aren't that great when they're all on the field together sometimes, or, you know, ever people have bad games, but when one of them misses, the others are great. I think we just need to draft 49ers knowing that guys are just going to miss time. Uh, on the other side of the ball, not much to talk about, but Darren Waller, just three for 20. Seven targets. Yeah, it was, it was a rough game. So Rough game for the Giants. I think yeah. I saw someone in our Slack uh, say that he was using his flippers <laughs> to catch the ball was, as the Waller is. There, th that was Jeremy who has Waller. There was one particular pass where it is like, oh, it, it hit him in the hand, so you feel like he should have caught it, but it was, it was not a great pass. 
Uh, it is the the, uh, the only the only comment I want to make about the the Giants is uh, it was great to see the return of Wandale Robinson. He was four for only four for twenty one. So I mean, this is not a fantasy moving situation. Five targets, but he was not on the field hardly at all. This was a very much a Kadarius Tony. Like when he was on the field, you knew the ball was going to Wandale Robinson. So it's I don't want to be you know like really excited chasing what 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 Robinson has done in this one game but it's just I think put him back on your radar as a possibility well by extension Isaiah Hodgins had uh zero receptions so the pecking order might be changing there in New York yeah better matchups could lead you to better results oh at and some we point in time we do it was I don't know if you wanted to whatever talk about it news or here but the the saga of Saquon Barkley's ankle. Oh yeah, has we we have another installment, everybody? Because another episode. Yeah, we got a new chapter of he left. He went. Oh, dude, I've seen a high ankle sprain. I've seen him over and over. That's a high ankle sprain. Reports back. No, it was a regular ankle sprain. Mm -hmm. Probably missing three Ordinary. weeks. Oh, wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait, wait. Day, Day Ball's like, yeah. dude, his progress is great. He's, I'm not ruling him out of Thursday. He's, this, game time decision. Yeah, he might play. But then ruled out on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So it was not a game time decision. And it was, okay, well, we know what we're going to do. Matt Burita will be the, the go-to guy. And then Saquon Barkley himself said, no, I'm dealing with a high ankle sprain. <laughs> and that said, I might be back next week. Like, So stay it, tuned. <laughs> Well, yeah, there Is will be the more. There will be more with Saquon's uh, ankle. All right. Put Clan Friday. Well, it is Friday, and every Friday we give away a $100 gift card to a supporter of the show over at jointhefoot.com. Today's $100 gift card to fantasychamps.com goes to Koi B. I don't know if I've heard. That name before. Coy. He's just playing. I see. Yeah. No, that, Boston. Yeah, that's not that good. Um, <laughs> hey, shooter's got to shoot. Yeah. Uh, but that was a brick. Congratulations. <laughs> that, was, that was a brick. Well, I'm going to keep shooting. <laughs> good. Good. And then a shout out to everybody that is over on our Discord channel, which is uh, very close to being the largest fantasy football Discord channel oh. in the world. It's, it's popping. And it is the most active. A lot of people helping one another out. Ballersdiscord.com is a quick way to get over there. Sign up. Uh, free to join. Yeah, you get to chat with a bunch of like-minded people over there. It's good times. And this Monday, so, I mean, get signed up. Be ready. This Monday we're having a, a fun trivia night hosted by the one and only Papa Josh. Yes. Papa Josh. <laughs> Just doing my best, Adam, Adam yes. Thielen there. <laughs> Sorry. Let's move on. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Some updates for the matchups we covered on yesterday's episode of the show. Austin Eckler remains sidelined on Thursday. Let's go to Jason Moore for comment. Yeah, he's not going to play. And let's go away from Jason Moore for comment. <laughs> Dolphins wide receiver Jalen Waddle remained yeah. sidelined with the concussion symptoms. That also is the case for Logan Thomas. So, uh, hesitant to... I mean, I, I, I personally don't think Jalen Waddle's going to play football. No. No, I, I think he technically has until Saturday to clear, but at this point you got to think he's out. And uh, the matchup is good on paper for Miami, so if you are looking for dart throws, DFS plays, you got to look Braxton Berrios' way, Durham Smythe, River Craycraft. Had to throw that out there. Yeah. Uh, Derrick Henry did not practice Thursday after being limited on Wednesday. You don't he's listed as toe slash rest. Yeah, you, you don't like seeing that he's not practicing on Thursday, but the fact that it is slash rest on the on the actual official practice report makes me feel better about it. Is it rest for Derrick Henry or for his toe? I believe it's for his toe. Okay. It's like, hey, re rest the toe, you know, and so he's probably in a wheelchair. His upper body was practicing? Yes. Oh, working out, just <laughs> pumping some iron. Aaron Jones, Christian Watson, the Packers hamstring update. Yep. Aaron Jones returned to a limited practice, and Christian Watson was downgraded to it, did not practice. Which we heard Watson was, this was part of their plan of ramping him up. Would expect he doesn't play. Uh, it feels so much like a ramping him down situation. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Well, it, it, because you can't overwork 
Like clearly his hamstring injury was was rough, and Watson has already been in his pro career dealing with hamstring injuries. So I think they're taking it slow. Aaron Jones was limited. The you know just a couple things on tape. Looks like a guy who's going to play, but keep your eyes up for the for the news because we don't know yet. Anthony Richardson sidelined on Thursday's practice with the concussion protocol. Also not practicing today, yeah, Friday. He'll, he'll be out. I think it's going to be Gardner Minshew and Andy Dalton playing football because the Panthers, uh, Bryce Young remains sidelined. Andy Dalton's going to start the game, and Bryce Young could miss more than just this week. Personally, I think this is an opportunity for Jonathan Mingo. He's been on sure. the field uh, a tremendous amount of time. The downfield throws, even the chances, they haven't been there with Bryce Young. Uh, I honestly would be looking personally at, at Mingo and Thielen with more optimism than with Bryce Young. I've, I've watched those games, and I, the opportunities just weren't there, and I think Dalton will throw the football. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't I don't see it as a major downgrade, but I don't see this as, as an upgrade. I see it as an upgrade. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I just don't because last year, I mean, when we saw Jameis Winston go to Andy Dalton – it hurt most of the wide receivers. Obviously, maybe the you know that means uh, um, that Bryce Young is worse in your mind. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, they, J Jameis Winston was helpful for fantasy. Bryce Young is an active detriment. So uh, to me, it's an upgrade from Bryce Young. It wouldn't be an upgrade from Jameis. So you're you're starting Adam Thielen and your sure. dynasty. Yes, league? I am. Okay. Yeah, he also right. put up 17 what? fantasy points last week. Oh, with Andy Dalton. No. <laughs> oh, with the guy you just besmirched. That's my point. Yeah, he, it's going to get better. Isaiah Pacheco returned to a limited practice on Thursday. Um, so there you go. It's good. Hey, this is a great matchup for Pacheco. Uh, I, I originally had Pacheco in as my start of the week until he showed up on the injury report. So if you've got him, I'm playing him. Well, let me put that to the test. Are you playing him over 98% of snaps and 18 carries? A.K.A. Zach Moss? Are you playing Pacheco over Zach Moss? I would play Pacheco against the Bears over Zach Moss for sure. What about you, Mike? I would probably play Moss. Against Baltimore in Baltimore? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean he was great last week. I just think it was – I mean, I, we, we know and, – and Foot Clan, if you're, if you're new to the show, because you – you hear me week after week after week besmirched Zach Moss, uh, traded him. I've 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 been yeah. a non-believer in him for since before the NFL draft, uh, where he was drafted. And I, you know, he, it's it's a bit, um, but he he is valuable. He 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 is a workhorse right now for for the Colts. And so when I uh, throw as much mud on him as I can, it's mostly for show. But I do think that it was. A bad, a really good matchup last sure. week, and a bad one this week. So yeah. I, I, I would, the, I would really match, not. The want matchup to is start not off. great, but it's like is Pacheco. I mean, how? As is, Pacheco, it's just how many opportunities will Pacheco actually have? The matchup's great, so when he touches the ball, he should get good chunks of yardage. But what's he going to carry the ball ten times? And is he going to get a goal line opportunity? No, that'll be Jarek McKinnon. So he has to rip off a huge run. Where Zach Moss, at least, if they get to the five or whatever it's going to be Zach Moss opportunity so I'm, I'm just I'm chasing touchdown Pacheco's not a bad play but I'm going for ceiling I think Zach Moss will have five targets that's why I care yeah, about Zach that Moss too. that it, it's not I was disappointed to see Pacheco's involvement last week and I was even more disappointed with two targets one catch but I can see it going either way this week I'm gonna have to make the call on one of my teams Kenny Gainwell returned to a limited practice on Thursday so we could see the beginnings of the Swift Gainwell timeshare playing there was, out. There me. was a report of hot hand. Yeah. Which No, it it's going to be that way. You're not going to throw Kenny Gainwell spent the entire off season earning the goodwill and, and multiple seasons earning the goodwill and the starter's job for a reason. And so I don't think he gets you know, he's not put in the attic here, but DeAndre Swift well, had such a performance. Yeah, he, he had such a performance that he earned himself a lot of opportunity. And if I was playing one this weekend, it would be DeAndre Swift. I just think it's going to be shared. Yeah, I agree. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Well, yesterday on the show, we covered the Titans, Browns, Falcons, Lions, Saints, Packers, Broncos, Dolphins, Chargers, Vikings, Patriots, Jets, Bills, Commanders. Was that one breath? 
That was one breath, and it was kind and you of were powering. I down. was powering down like yeah. a computer. Oh, I, I I heard I heard it, and that was also a bit. <laughs> I'm not actually a computer. All right, today we we've got I'm some more. I'm not a cat. I am no. not a cat. <laughs> Your Honor, uh, Houston Texans. They're zero and two, and they take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jagu. Did you see that, yes. Mike? You shared that poll with yeah, us. Yeah, it was. They went I, around. Was I it? I think it was CBS. They went around the studio and they asked how to pronounce it. And now I'm. I'm going to do it here. We're going to go through every member, real quick. There's two different ways to say Jacksonville's team, team. name. Yeah. Jason. Jaguars. Okay. Jaguars. Okay. Al. Ja- Jaguars. Okay. okay. Jaguars. Ooh, that Jaguars. was. Jaguars. Oh. Did you say Jaguars? Jaguars. Okay. It sounded like Brooksy went yeah, wires, Brooks, too. Brooks, Brooks I think I'm went... closer to the wires. So it's wires but I've or also wars? Never thought yeah. about it. It's uh, W I R E S or W A R S. The, the, the best part of the video to me was. And I mean, it was like 50 50. Like, yeah, these are sports people, and it was not. It wasn't a room. So people weren't being influenced by other people's answers. And then uh, you had uh, one of them was a self proclaimed mm-hmm. Jacksonville fan from birth. And it was. And they went. Jacksonville Jaguars. And yeah, what's did. funny is when we started the show, it was yeah. always Jaguars. Yep. That's how I said I've it been, forever. I converted to wars. I converted to wars because all these Jaguars fans are like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not Jaguars. It's mm-hmm. Jaguars. And yeah. then, yeah, it was funny to watch the like self-proclaimed, lifelong yeah. Jaguars fans say, it is definitely Jaguars. So I don't know. Who also, knows that? It's, also, it, it's both. <laughs> Clearly. Um, it's yes. Yes, Kyle. It is Jaguars. <laughs> Uh, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. <laughs> Here's where we talk about the matchup. Uh, Jacksonville, eight and a half point favorites. Over under is 44 points. Texans won in Jacksonville last year, 13 to six. It is a divisional game. I have been considering. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I could, I could feel the energy shift in the room. Couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Andy's almost upset of the week. I don't I don't hate it. It's an eight and a half point line. Yes. Houston, they're 0 and 2, I understand. But uh on the defensive side, they've been pretty stout against wide receivers. Jacksonville's had some bumps along the way getting this offense rolling again this year. Uh they have all the tools and ability to blow Houston out of the water here. So that that is certainly in the range of outcomes, but the over/under is just forty-four points. Um, Christian Kirk had his week last week. Zay Jones the week before, uh, and Zay Jones not practicing Wednesday, Thursday. So Christian Kirk is back in play. Fourteen targets last week. I've been impressed with C.J. Stroud and what he's been able to do. He's he's throwing the football a ton. They can't run it. Their offensive line's a mess. But Jacksonville's defense are twenty-eighth against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. I don't think C.J. Stroud is a, a a bad DFS play this week, personally. Agreed. And the uh, there's going to be some opportunities here. I am dying for a Damian Pierce. I'm proud to have drafted you. Moment. Can you can you promise me that this week, Jason? Mm, nope. No, I can't. Um, I cannot promise you that. If you look at the Jacksonville defense uh, this season and last year. They're pretty stout against the run, partially because they are a pass funnel defense and you can throw on them. Uh, it's the exact opposite of the Houston Texans. Um, the Houston Texans, they are not a good play for – you always see this matchup. You see this bad team, this team going after the number one pick, and um, and you think, oh, good, I want to fire up all my, all my players against them. But that has not worked out. Last year, if you played a quarterback against – the Texans, you were really, really unhappy. They were the number one team against quarterbacks. Not not good. They they averaged 10 fantasy points per game given up to the quarterback position. And why? Because you were up a ton, and they're easy to run on, and so you don't need to throw the ball. Last year, in these two matchups, one of which the Houston Texans won, they beat Jacksonville and Jacksonville. Uh, Trevor Lawrence had 10 fantasy points and four and a half fantasy points. So I... It's not to say you have to bench Trevor Lawrence. Well, let me give you some names, Jason. Trevor Lawrence or Geno Smith against Gino. Carolina. Trevor Lawrence or Deshaun Watson against the Tennessee Deshaun Titans. Deshaun Watson. 
Ooh, okay. I, I think he's a good play this week, even though he's been putrid. I'm with Jason on this. So uh, there you go. Damian Pierce, it's been rough. You know, C.J. Stroud's throwing the ball a ton. Nico Collins, I think you stay in the flames there. Yeah, agreed. Uh, negative game scripts are going to be a part of the Houston experience. Tank Dell, he is practicing in full. I think he's viable this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, Travis Etienne, Mike, you, he was your start of the week yesterday. Should be wheels up for Travis Etienne. Honestly, I think we do a disservice to anybody to even – really worry about or talk about or mention Tank Bigsby right now. I think the best way to look at things is Travis Etienne's the starting running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars. <laughs> uh, that's that's yeah. also never going to happen again. But, yeah, uh, it's, but Etienne is the guy. It's early in the season, um, so maybe by the end of the year we will have a different opinion when these rookies uh, come on strong, but – I think we've got an answer. One of the biggest questions coming into this year was Kenneth Walker and Travis Etienne, these stud running backs. There you go. These guys who you thought were just going to be so great, and then their team goes and drafts a really talented, really high draft capital running back to add to the running back room, and you go, oh, it's going to be a timeshare. Neither one of them are a timeshare. Both these rookies came in to be backups to their star running back incumbents. If you drafted Evan Ingram, who's been the tight end 7-9 and nine so far, are you content? Yes. Mike, Mike just gave me the yes. like. Mike gave me the face where, like, he's ordering from a new restaurant and he had the first bite, and he's like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm still happy I ordered it. Yeah, five for 49, six for 57. I mean, the, yeah, yeah a, you're not moving on. You're from getting that. points. Yeah, Which is step one and tight end. Exactly. Yeah. This year? Are you kidding me? This year, <laughs> that is phenomenal. That's over seven points a game. That's as good as you can hope and pray for it. Tight well, end. yeah, and we just, what, did we get off Darren Waller three for 20? I mean, yeah. count your blessings there. Keep playing Ingram. And if Zay Jones misses, there's going to be some opportunity for him. Yeah. The Indianapolis Colts are 1-1, one and, one and they take on the Baltimore Ravens, who are 2-0. and oh. DraftKings Sportsbook line has Baltimore minus 8. The over-under is 44. It looks like it'll be Gardner Minshew and Lamar Jackson squaring off. Would have been fun to see Anthony Richardson take on Lamar Jackson in this one. Yeah. Considering uh, Richardson was on pace for, you know, even with the missed time, almost almost 650 rushing yards and 25 rushing touchdowns. Uh, but we're not going to get that. So uh, on paper, this looks like Baltimore should be able to take care of their business. Lamar Jackson, he's a great start. Zay Flowers, Mike, start of the week yesterday. The Colts secondary is allowing the second most points to wide receivers. And then here's where it gets interesting to me is I think there will be another wide receiver contributing in this game beyond Zay Flowers. For Baltimore? For Baltimore. And the the wide receiver I think it's going to be is Nelson Aguilar. That's who I think is going to make the contribution. Someone's okay. in your DraftKings lineup. <laughs> I can always smell them. <laughs> last can, last week it was Nico. Yeah, or, yeah you're right. Am I? Yeah, I yeah, knew it. Right. I knew it. Uh, look, Odell Beckham didn't practice Wednesday, Thursday. Nelson Aguilar had six targets last week. He was the number one beneficiary from Beckham leaving the game. It wasn't Bateman. It was Aguilar, who also flashed in preseason, and who seems to camp. have earned the trust of Lamar Jackson. So that's my that's my little uh, under the radar. Start I, I like throwing that out there as a DFS dart throw. Um, I don't know that I would pick him up in, in a redraft league and try to roster him and rely on him. No. But it's a really good point because Nelson Aguilar has spent his career being the butt of jokes, and he's spent this offseason being the praise of coaches. So And and then was really good this last week. So he's, he's an interesting name to monitor. Okay, Mark Andrews, you play him. And uh -huh. then on the other side, Zach Moss. It's all about workload. He had 98% of snaps, 100% of the opportunities. He succeeded with them relative to the to the matchup, uh -huh. and so I think he gets it all this week. He certainly it's just will a get bad it matchup because the Ravens are giving up eleven points to fantasy running backs. Yeah, I mean, if if he gets all eleven, I guess you're going to be. Which he probably will. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I bet eleven points is what he scores exactly, I'll take ten. All right, but that is someone that you could start. I mean, getting ten from a running back is not the end of the world, but this isn't a great matchup. You're not getting twenty points in Baltimore against the Baltimore run defense with Gardner Minshew at quarterback. Is Gardner going to be able to supply Michael Pittman with enough work in this game, Mike? Uh, I think so. I mean, we have a 33% target share for Michael Pittman so far, and they really, like, the ball is just going to him. Like, he is truly the, their number one guy. 
Gardner's a very capable backup, so it's status quo for how I'm looking at Pittman. P uh, Pittman last week had, what, 12 targets, 8 receptions, and obviously the, a lot of that was Gardner Minshew. And uh, gentlemen over there in Deucer's Alley, if you hear anything update-wise on these uh, Baltimore Ravens, will you please let us know? Because I'd love a practice report on Beckham before, I don't know, a segment later. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, what are you doing with the running backs for Baltimore? Oh, Gus Bus. Justice Hill not expected to play with the turf toe. I, I, look, I, at the surface, I'm in agreement. How can you argue? It's likely to be Gus Edwards, but Melvin Gordon will likely be brought up. I think they just added Kenyon Drake to the practice squad, mm -hmm. who the team knows Kenyon Drake. Oh, we do have an update. Beckham not at practice today. Cool. So there you go. There you go. All right. Uh, so is it like – if you, because these are both waiver wire guys, maybe you have both. If you are you making the decision, Gus Edwards over Zach Moss? Oh, yes, for <laughs> sure. And that's not that's not the bit of me hating Zach yeah, Moss. Yeah, no, it's you, fair. You're, you're talking about an. It's Indianapolis. more of a question if they were both guys were active. If Justice Hill was there and Gus Edwards, Justice then you could Hill, make the argument. Not at practice. Right. Today. Yes, you you could make the argument. But the fact that he's not expected to play, hasn't practiced all week. If if Gus is there with just Melvin Gordon and and even Kenyon Drake is active on game day. I'm definitely playing Gus with his touchdown opportunities over Moss. Yeah, I agree. And right. let's take a quick break, come back with the Panther Seahawks. All right, the Panthers are 0-2, and, and they take on the 1-1 Seattle Seahawks in Seattle. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Seattle minus 5.5. Now, does that line surprise you? Seattle is a tough place to play. And Carolina is 0-2 and likely onto a backup quarterback. To me, that line is... You think it's too low? I think it's pretty low for what we came into this season thinking about Seattle and what we have seen so far from Carolina. So this, to me, is a testament to Carolina's defense being uh, better than expected. You they know, are. They're, they're a decent unit. Yeah, they have been, uh, they've been shutting it down, wide receivers and quarterbacks, through two weeks. I know it's just two weeks, but... Uh, Jason, you are not afraid of them. You put Geno Smith as your start of the week in this uh, matchup. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you look at the who the Carolina Panthers played the first two weeks, uh, you can't really take this season and and say, well, they're they're good against quarterbacks right now. They they haven't really been challenged. And Geno, they they figured it out with the offensive line, the protection getting out quick. Uh, obviously, we had a monstrous bounce back game from Tyler Lockett. You're always fine with DK Metcalf. You've added Jackson Smith and Jig, but yeah, I'm I'm wheels up with Gino. Which DK Metcalf did not practice Wednesday or Thursday. He has said he's going to play. This is maintenance, but do remember like, he left the game briefly with a, uh, I believe just like a nasty shot in the ribs or so. But he did come back in the game, so it's make sure, but like don't check out on the weekend uh, if you got Metcalf in your lineup. You need to make sure that he's playing. So Lockett's in. Metcalf, if he's playing, you're starting him. And Kenneth Walker, two oh, rushing touchdowns, baby. should be set up for success against the 31st-ranked rushing defense so far through two games. Adam Thielen and Andy Dalton hanging out. One last ride. Uh, Adam Thielen, <laughs> seven for 54 and a touchdown last week. It's like the heist movie where the old guys Oh, I remember back. that, yeah. He yeah, was Morgan Freeman in that <laughs> one. Yeah, he was. I think uh, we we already discussed it. I, I mean, this up. Uh, at, at worst, this is neutral. Adam Thielen produced last week. They don't have weapons in the passing game, so you know the Seahawks so far they've been awful. Going in style, yeah. Who is the other two actors? Uh, we on got there? Alan Arkin. Oh gosh, we got Michael Caine. Oh, there it is. Oh, Chris Lloyd, Morgan yeah. Freeman. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, <laughs> you can make fun of the thirty-three-year-old all you want. Seahawks have been basically the worst in football in terms of giving up fantasy points to the wide receiver position. I have more confidence that they'll continue to give up points to the wide receiver position because of Andy Dalton. And so I think Adam Thielen is fine as a flex play this week. Yeah, fine is the And I think, I think Mingo could have his first game. He's on the field constantly. I think he had eight targets last week. That could be wrong. Let me double check that. He had no, a, eight targets. Yeah, he had a lot of targets. They just were not good targets, but he played on – 98% of Carolina's snaps. So there you go. Miles Sanders, Jason, yeah, you, you have him as your start of the week. Seattle defense has been 
pretty bad. So maybe that's a little bit of that line too. Maybe this game will be a little bit closer than we expect. Doubt it. Doubt it? I do. I doubt it. I, th- I think Seattle, like you said, it's a really tough place to play. And the matchups for the first two weeks for these teams, I, I, I think we're going to see more of what we saw last season from both of these uh, rosters. The Chicago Bears are 0-2. They take on the Kansas City Chiefs at Arrowhead. Here we go. Here's that line you're looking for. DraftKings Sportsbook has Kansas City as 12.5-point home favorites. The over-under is 48. So uh, I think our implied point total is incorrect here in the in our show, Doc. I think so. Uh, but that's got to put Kansas City at the 28-29 point mark. And Chicago down at 17. It's been grotesque. Oh, 30. 30 is the implied point total. Um, how do you feel about that word to describe the Chicago offense? The wait, the, the 30? word was the word was grotesque. Oh, yeah, that's accurate. Is that too soft a word? I think it's too exciting of a word. Honestly, <laughs> I I, I feel like uh, they're too boring to be called grotesque. Grotesque seems like you know. Look, you you might not want to look at it, but you have a hard time looking away. away. Mm, uh, I don't want to look. I at I can this. easily look away at the the Bears' offense right now. The Bears fans and the depression that is set in through two weeks. Anything changing this week in Kansas City? <laughs> no, I mean the matchup is so brutal. You're upset about the fact that you know you you came in thinking you have a chance at this division. Justin Fields could take a step forward with DJ Moore. You added a lot to your defense. Maybe you can compete this year, maybe not make the playoffs, but be like one of those up and coming teams that looks like, uh, you know, you, you got a shot towards the end of the year. And instead you're going 0 three and you're getting really scary for my sweet, sweet Arizona Cardinals. Number one pick, uh, Caleb yeah, Williams just, is ours. Justin Chicago Fields pick. coming out and blaming coaching to a degree of what, what's causing him to overthink in the pocket. Let's talk about Khalil Herbert for a second because through two weeks, 9.9 fantasy points in week one, 6.3 fantasy points in week two against Green Bay and Tampa Bay, now in Arrowhead in week three. I feel like I've seen tons of start sit and you know trade questions and general speculation on Khalil Herbert in general. Are you trying to find a different option this week? It's really frustrating because the Bears – Offense has been terrible. Khalil Herbert is, in my opinion, a good running back. He's he was on the field sixty percent of the snaps. Like with Deonta Foreman being inactive, it was Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson, and sixty percent of snaps turned into seven carries and three targets. Like the the offense is terrible, and yet they're not giving their running backs the the true option to do anything. So are you making the argument against Khalil Herbert based on that? I, I'm i making the the argument that it's, it's really frustrating that they are – we don't know. Like, who is – should Khalil Herbert be the starter? I don't know. Give him some work. Let's find out. Should we find out from the bench? Yeah, we should find out from the bench. Um, you know, we, we saw this happen last year a couple times with David Montgomery. Um, you look at the end of the season, David Montgomery on the field for 54% of snaps and gets six carries. Uh, and David Montgomery was, you know, a, 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 you know, a higher draft capital, higher paid, better player than Khalil Herbert. So I think Khalil Herbert right now, until proven otherwise, needs to be on your bench. Your Zach Moss against Baltimore or Khalil Herbert. I, I, w- when we, when you said let's talk about Khalil Herbert, I thought, please don't ask me Zach Moss versus Khalil Herbert. Um, I mean, that's how you have to ask. So it has to be waiver guys because it's like. Well, no, it, it, I I think I would at that point I'm going to take the 98 percent of snaps from Zach Moss. That's what I would do. Pacheco across the field. Oh, I would. I love Pacheco. Yeah, I, 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 I am Pacheco. all in on Pacheco this. Week. Would you play? I mean, let, let's find some nasty nasty boys here. What about Kendra Miller if he was active? I'd play Herbert. Um, but it, I I think I'd play Herbert too with the trifecta I, in New Orleans. I don't blame people who have the courage to take the shot for Kendra Miller. It just that. That is that's high risk. Would I you, like risk, but that's. Would you rather roster Cam Akers right now, going to Minnesota or Khalil Herbert? Ooh, Cam Akers, about yeah, uh, yeah, probably Akers. But it's they're about well, the you same. Get nasty, brother. Uh, Najee Harris or Khalil Herbert? Najee. Najee Harris plays the Raiders. Yeah, gross. 
<laughs> DJ Moore was six for 104 despite the putrid week. You keep playing DJ Moore? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Justin Fields, right now it's been gross. He says he's not going to tr- – he basically said he's not going to think as much. Which that should be more running. Uh, that That's what it means to me because – Something about processing defenses right now is not working for Justin Fields. And I, if you read between the lines, it feels like he's saying, hey, you're trying to make me a pocket passer. It would be nice if he could be a pocket passer. I'm going to say that because there were opportunities against that defense last week, and he just didn't, he didn't let it go. I mean, if you watch the game, it was like everyone screaming at the TV, throw the ball. Yeah. He's, or take off. Yeah. <laughs> like either don't just, just don't stand and run into in the, the back. Pocket. Yeah. He's, and don't you dare pump. He, don't you dare <laughs> don't you dare pump again. He looks like a guy No one's believing you're going to throw it. who's really afraid of mistakes. Yeah. That's what it looks like to me. Uh Yeah. So uh, but but Are the, you playing Stafford or uh, Wow. Or Gino over Justin Fields? So what I was going to add to it is the Bears will be missing just like the Giants the 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 starting portion of the left line will be gone. Kansas City is a very strong defense. Oh, but man, just so Fields or Stafford. Stafford's Monday night <laughs> against Cincinnati in Cincinnati. Uh, oh man. I'm going to personally keep rolling out Fields. He has been putrid and the Kansas City Chiefs defense has been good. So if you wanted to, you know, Geno to me is a little bit more interesting than Stafford. That that I think is a is a closer call. Uh, the Bengals still have a really good defense, um, and and Stafford hasn't been throwing touchdowns so far this season. So, but with Fields, you you saw the Chiefs shut down two pocket passers. Jared Goff week one didn't do much, um, although although they did give up you know points to the offense. And then obviously last week it was a little bit rainy, a little bit rain. But Trevor Lawrence didn't do much when when you would have hoped for a bigger game. So I think you might want to bench him. To be happier. I mean, you, it's. I'm it's saying just, that it's been rough. I, I, I think from a I, look, I think Justin Fields is going to bounce back at some point. He was my start of the week last week because I thought that. But maybe this is the time when you let yourself off the hook. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know what other matchups. I mean, you got to start someone else. You can't just bench him. You got to start Russell Wilson, or you you've got to start Stafford, or you got to start Goff. I mean, maybe Goff you would you would throw in there. Those are just. I would hard. at home. Those are yeah. Those those are just hard for me. I to me, I would keep rolling fields, but um, I don't. You know, maybe I'm not feeling the burns that people who have had to start him like Owl. You picked up Kirk Cousins, and I would start Kirk Cousins easily over Fields. Kirk's been on fire. His matchup is great. Um, but th- that's a tough one. So you I, you want you would prefer to bench him, Andy? I I not necessarily. I'm just saying that from a mental standpoint has been really hard on those that drafted him. And if you put him on the bench and you play somebody that you have some confidence in, if he has a bad game, you'll be happy you made that decision. And if he has a good game, you'll be like, okay, this draft pick's getting redeemed and I can play him again in the future. So I I just think it might be mentally taxing to lose three straight games because of Justin Fields. I understand that. This is, uh, you know. And that's part of the game. Uh, it is part of the game, absolutely. And sometimes it's about winning and sometimes it's about mental health. Correct. And uh, <laughs> speaking of mental health, can you play any wide receivers on the Kansas City side? You can. They're projected for 30 points. Somebody's going to do something, but Tony and Moore and, and Rice and MVS and Watson and I think you, you kind of just – Nope. Kelsey. Yeah, it's Kelsey. Uh, I would put Kadarius Tony at the top of the list. Um, but he's hurt. He's hurt now. I, he's missing practice. Dude. <laughs> dude, I, just retire. <laughs> Just yeah, I don't, retire. I, don't, I know you're like, what is this, year three in the league, but you can't play football, man. I don't think he he's going to play this when, week. When he's on the field, like last week was good. No. I'm saying like when he, in his opportunities. <laughs> what, 28% what he, of snaps. Five catches for 35 yards on 28% of snaps. Like, but but you're not getting more snaps. I'm if, not talking about fantasy football. I'm just oh, talking to okay. the man, Kadarius Tony, oh, okay. where Jason's telling you. him to retire. I'm saying for his body's sake, he's just not able to take NFL action. Yeah, I mean, the problem is is I would not be shocked if Kansas City played him on 28% of snaps the rest of the season. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't either. Yeah, I would just avoid – it's so crazy that you can have a 30-point projected team implied total and say bench all wide receivers. 
All right, let's move on to the next blowout. Dallas, 2-0, and taking on the Cardinals, 0-2. Cardinals are at home. Dallas is a 12.5-point favorite. <laughs> the over-under is 43. And uh, we got the unfortunate news yesterday that Trayvon Diggs, oh, superstar yeah. cornerback, torn ACL in practice. His season is over. And Dallas was playing man coverage 42% of the time. They were dominating. That was giving them the ability to go at the quarterback constantly. And uh, it's going to hurt their defense. It is. You know, you can't take away Certainly. an all-pro type of wide res or, uh, cornerback. But it ain't going to probably hurt them this week. So they're on the road. They're still 12.5-point favorites. You know, from the Cardinals' side of the fantasy world, I am fine with Zach Ertz. James Conner is a volume play. Hollywood Brown is a start and close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Mike's making faces. It's, that just, it's, like, it's, it's been so disappointing. I mean, the guy had – For a, Hollywood? Yeah. He had a touchdown last week. He scored, and he still wasn't a top 24 option at That's the bad. wide receiver position. That's and bad. he had 10 targets. 10 targets it's, and scored. It was not in the top 24. Ooh. That being said, the, the, there was a lot of wide receiver scoring this last week. He did not have a bad game. 14 and a half, half PPR points. You'd, you'd be yeah, happy okay, with that. That's fair. But there was a lot of wide receiver scoring. There were some good games. But it was also, I mean, that was against the Giants. I mean, without Trayvon Diggs, the Dallas Cowboys are still, the Cardinals are outmatched Yeah, it's here. the pass rush of the Cowboys that are going to really, really be a problem. Even, even without Diggs in the secondary, there's going to be a lot of pressure. Dak is Mike's start of the week at quarterback. Jake Ferguson, Mike's start of the week at tight end. CeeDee Lamb is an auto start. Tony Pollard is an auto start. So the real question is James Conner. Yeah, I mean, in the game, I think it is James Conner. I don't think you can sit him, though. I mean, he's going to have 20 opportunities in this ball game. And yeah, even with a bad matchup, I would play him over most of all of those other options that we're talking about in the, at the Zach Moss level. You know what I'm pretty much doing with Arizona is I'm, I'm trying to just play guys that get the dump off close to the line of scrimmage garbage. Because they're going to be a negative game scripts, and so Zach Zach, Ertz, James Conner. Zach Ertz, James Conner is the answer. Uh, Brandon Cooks, are you going to give him a week? Uh, yeah, a week I'll, off? I'll, I'll let him. He returned to practice with the sprained MCL, but I'm going to let him show me that he's actually ready. Pittsburgh's one and one. They take on the Las Vegas Raiders, who are also one and one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Raiders two and a half point home favorites. The over under is forty three. Does that line surprise you at all? No, I don't think so. I think I think this is pretty much exactly where I would put this game um the Steelers have if, if you look at there's two struggling offenses or at least uninspiring offenses it's a good word um and there's one good defense so to me um if if the line is weird at all I I think that the Raiders will have a more difficult time with the Steelers than the Steelers will have with the Raiders Josh Jacobs I threw him in there as a start of the week because uh well Get the man some confidence. It's time to go. And the Steelers are dead last against running backs so far through two weeks. Uh, you saw big plays against them last week, chunk plays. Jerome Ford, Nick Chubb, I hope we get one from Mr. Joshua Jacobs this week. And we're banking on on him being heavily utilized. I will, prom I will guarantee he has more rushing yards this week. Promise. Wow. Wow. Big man. Yeah. Yeah, cut that out for socials. Uh, Devontae Adams is in your lineup, and uh, that's just the state of affairs for Devontae Adams right now. Mm -hmm. Are you playing anybody else on that side I, of the ball? I think Jacoby Myers is interesting. I mean, He returned to a full practice, should be back out there. Week one against the Broncos, it was 10 targets and 80% of the snaps. That turned into nine for 81. The two touchdowns, the two touchdowns are just like – Thielen or I, Jacoby Myers? I'll, Jacoby. I'd go Jacoby. Okay. Jacoby even got I mean he Hollywood had the, or Jacoby. 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 He he had uh really valuable targets too. It wasn't just, you know, Nico or workers. Jacoby. Nico. Dotson or Jacoby. Jacoby. Judy or Jacoby. Jacoby. Okay. Kenny Pickett? Ew. Yes. Yeah. Najee Harris? I hopeful, guess. I hopeful. guess. I mean, this is a good matchup for him. Yeah. I mean, you 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 look last. I think season, Jalen Warren's a flex category in sure. this game. Last season, the Raiders' run defense was really really bad. They ranked thirtieth. They gave up twenty seven and a half uh, fantasy points per game. This season, 
they rank 30th. They give up 28 fantasy points a game to the running back position. So I do think Najee is a decent play this week, and Warren is a flex. Mike, George Pickens. Uh, yeah, you you got to chase after that. They they at least found something in him last or last week. Uh, going back to the the over under at forty three, I I do think that's actually high. Like unless Pitt, unless they're counting on the Steelers to score on defense. Allen Robinson ran fewer routes than Calvin Austin last week. Pat Fryermuth is my start of the week, and it's time to get into the double digits. <laughs> it's time to get into two hands. Into total yardage, and uh, <laughs> there you go. Monday Night Football, we have another doubleheader, gentlemen. No! But we don't have another doubleheader until week 14. Are they stacked again, or are they at least? Yeah, I believe they are. Why? Are... Stop! <laughs> God, yeah, one hour, One hour apart. One hour apart is so dumb. Like you, you cannot enjoy, you you can't enjoy either game. You have to pick because you like if you're not if you got two rooms like Jason. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, if you have two rooms and you can or two televisions that you can see them both at the same time, but you, I mean, flipping back and forth between football you games phone? is not enjoyable to me. Yeah, I, sure, I'll throw it on a tablet, but even that is it's time to adjust, Mike. It's time to make it, the best of it. I am making the best of it, but it's dumb. Philadelphia is 2-0. They take on the 2-0 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Philly minus 5. The over-under is 46. This, I mean, I this was almost my almost upset as well. I, I've not been impressed with the Philadelphia offense thus far. Tampa's offense has been very impressive to me. Uh, the Buccaneers are doing well enough on the defensive side, I think, at home to make this a game. But um, I might stand alone in that belief baker has been good mike evans number two wide receiver on the year right now chris godwin he's been solid five for 51 five for 58 just needs to get into the end zone rashad white bunch of opportunities last yeah. week are you doing you know are you concerned about any of these guys facing philadelphia at home uh rashad white for sure the i mean i'm not concerned with his opportunities because it was 19 in week one against Minnesota, but that 19 <laughs> turned into 5.9 half PPR points. So, wow, he, that yeah. is I mean, impressive. That's really, it's, he had 19 <laughs> opportunities and he couldn't yeah. score six fantasy points. Yeah, it's it's really good stuff. But it was a huge bounce back against Chicago. Far more concerned against Philadelphia, but running backs don't get volume these days, and and he still will. Buccaneers defense thus far through two weeks, of course. Not the most uh, powerful offenses facing off against them, but been good against running backs. Now you're going to have a potential timeshare here with Swift and Gainwell. Are you playing Swift this week? Yeah, yeah. That's a that was a quick yes. There's it, it is because because Kenneth Gainwell is still it's limited practice. It's it's not like he is he's back, baby. He's doing full practices the entire week. Maybe he gets a full practice in on Friday, but I feel like until he's really actually healthy. DeAndre Swift is, you got to play him. Yeah, I mean, definitely if Gainwell is inactive, he's he becomes a must start. I think you can start him with Swift, but I, I'm scared there. You know, I, I think if Gainwell is active for the game, I'm not even confident Swift is the 1A of if there's a 1A and 1B. A.J. Brown, squeaky wheel. It's going to be a big week. Could be. Devontae Smith, he was limited on Thursday with a thigh hamstring situation. Doesn't matter. If you guys hear anything over there in Deucer's Alley on today's practice for Philly, would love to know about Gainwell and Devontae Smith. Nothing yet. Love Dallas Goddard. Yeah, what is going on? Not it, – it, it's concerning because you have a new offensive coordinator. Yeah. And so maybe Dallas Goddard's – being a focal point is just not a reality. Well, he kind of was a focal point last week after not being involved in week one. They manufactured touches for him. They called plays up for him, but everything was so close to the line of scrimmage that he would turn six catches into 22 yards. Say so that's it's the Zach Ertz plan. Yeah, so Zach Ertz in week one was six for 21. I mean, this this yeah, is so, not this is not how you use Dallas Goddard. This is not getting it done. And I, that's where I feel like I'm going to bet on talent. I'm going to bet on this team to figure it out. This is a team that has used him correctly before. And he is a talented player, so I don't think they're just going to put their head in the sand and be like, "What well, that worked." Well, let me let me test you. 
because there's no team giving up more points to tight ends oh, right now man. than Philadelphia. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. And Kate Otten was 6 for 41 last week. So you're going to have a pass rush. You're going to have Kate Otten available on the field all the time. Are you? Do you have the stones to play Kate Otten this no. week over to Dallas Goddard? No. I don't know that having the stones is the right way to look at that. I mean, Do you have the ins insanity? I, yeah, I, I would still roll with Dallas Goddard over Kate Otten unequivocally. But is Kate Otten to play this week? I mean, you, we talk about – Sure, yeah. You guys were talking about tight end matchups being kind of – Yeah, it's nasty. I just feel like Kate Otten maybe suffers from being named Kate Otten. And, he, and we don't think of him in the right lens because this is a – you know, it's a second-year tight end. He's their full-time tight end. It's uh, it, because it's a floor play. Like, you're – Right. You're – when you play Kate Otten – and you get six for 41. I mean, you're ecstatic about that. Like, you are super juiced up. If you get three for 30 from Otten, you're like, that, yeah, we did it, baby. I, I like, got some points. I feel like Ferguson, though, like, he's in that I'm same category he, as Otten. But I'm going for touchdowns. Well, like, I'm not Okay. I'm not confident that the Otten's going to get touchdowns. And I, I, would, I would just throw out, we, we've seen Hunter Henry really be a focal point of the New England Patriots offense. He had a good week against Philly. And last week it was TJ Hawkinson. So they've played two – legitimate tight ends when you look at oh they've given up a lot of fancy points so far this year they were pretty good against tight ends last season we believe in Otten if he has a big week this week is he going to be yeah he'll he'll certainly be more on my believable radar all right the Rams are one and one and they take on Cincinnati Cincinnati's 0 and 2 in the DraftKings Sportsbook line here at Cincinnati minus three at home over under 43 and a half it's a rematch of the Super Bowl very close Super Bowl and Joe Burrow uh I think he's going to be playing Seems like probably, yeah. But are you playing him? Pro yeah, I mean, if he's playing, oh, I'm probably man. playing him. The, the worst part of the decision is that it is Monday night, and it is the second of the Monday night games. Like, if you're... If your plan is Joe Burrow... Oh, I mean, better I guess, have Stafford. I, yeah, I guess you could pick up Stafford. That's, uh, you know, that's my advice. If you're rolling with Joe Burrow and you're locking that in, uh, Stafford is probably on your waiver wire. I'd go pick him up because I do not want to get into Monday night, get a, a whoops a doozle, Joe Burrow aggravated and his calf running onto the field. I'm not playing the Bengals backup. I'm going to play Stafford. So just protect yourself. 100%. If you cannot get Stafford and you have Burrow, if there's another option out there to stream, I would start them on Sunday. You know, if, if you could throw in Goff or Geno or those guys we were talking about, I would, I would start them ahead of time because – this is the type of injury that even if he's said he's active could be a pregame change of mind. I do think he'll play, and I think it's a benefit that they have the Monday night game for his kind of re-aggravation, listening to the head coach talk about how he feels. I think he'll be out there, which would be good news for Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, who are just kind of auto plays anyways. Uh, what about the running backs in this game? Would you rather play Joe Mixon, who's been the RB27 and the RB20, <laughs> Is that 18 opportunities per week? Or would you rather play Kyron Williams, who is the running back to for fantasy on the year through two weeks? He's leading all running backs in targets. It, it got super juiced up this past week because week one was two for uh, – well, I, I don't know. Our, maybe our box score is weird because I'm looking at two targets, no receptions, but somehow he had two receiving yards. So we need to investigate that further. Uh, but last week – uh, tons and tons of targets. The fact that he got it done against San Francisco. Uh, oh, it was a Van Jefferson lateral. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, the fact that Kyron against a great defense got it done. That gives me a ton of confidence. And he's going to be the guy. 95% of snaps last week. I do not blame anyone who is looking to just catch the game where he officially goes on fire and even playing him over Mixon. I understand it. Well, I mean, this is the decision you have to make with Kyron because you picked him up off of waivers. Right. You're going to be benching players like Pacheco, like Damian Pierce, like Joe Mixon. These are the decisions people have to make, and, and you're saying pretty much stay in the flames with Kyron? That's what I'm doing. Jason, are you in the same boat? Yeah, I, I am. I've got uh, Kyron Williams as my running back eight this week. So there's <laughs> if you're able to bench him, um, congrats. You've got great other running backs. Matthew Stafford is the third highest passing yardage quarterback this year Pook Nukem and Tutu Atwell both of them have been very very good Bearded in fact Tutu has run and chew bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> in 
Uh, Tutu has run more routes than anybody in football. Eight targets, nine really? targets. Wow. Yeah. And he's looked the part. He's He has made some great catches. He's had awesome separation. Uh, you, you should be able to play both those players. Okay. Uh, Judy or Tutu? Tutu. Tutu. Drake London or Tutu? Drake. Drake London. Okay. All right. Not by a ton, but I, I'd go Drake. Uh, we done with Tyler Higby for now? Yep. Anybody else from this game you guys want to talk about? Mm, nope. David Montgomery, some up injury updates for you. Not at practice on Friday. He's not going to be playing football. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. Dan Campbell said they feel pretty good that he will play week three. I'm I'm worried that that might be worse for fantasy <laughs> players somehow. Yeah, I, I think he'll be okay if he plays. If he plays, he'll be in my lineup. Um, I think if it's worse, it's worse because just give the guy some rest. Let him get to full strength. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't think you bench him. Logan Thomas ruled out due to the concussion. So he will not be uh, the tight end for the commanders this week. Kevin Stefanski Ooh. said Kareem Hunt will be playing on Sunday, uh, and they will see how much, but that he's ready to go. That's great. And uh, Jalen Waddle update, this is great. He is practicing today. He has not cleared the concussion protocol. But usually when guys clear, you know, on that Saturday or whatever – that only happens when this happens first and you get back to practice. So a little bit of a little bit of hope. Okay, let's move on. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. Guys, I completely oh, I, I completely <laughs> forgot. Oh, I watched your I face. Didn't. It wa I watched your face, Jason, and it was outstanding because it was like we're moving on, the show's going, Jason's bebopping, he's happy. And then it hit that you are once again. I'm I'm sad that we had that beautiful uh, video drop because that's when my face fell out my butt, and <laughs> you didn't get to see it. Uh, we we had another. What? Yeah, I don't know that expression, but I, but I believe it. I'm putting that in the vernacular, though. That was great. So every week, uh, <laughs> mano y mano y mano on DraftKings, the fantasy face off once again week. Number two it's, went my way. It's incredible. I have uh, started 2-0, and which like, is delightful. This The punishment is so ridiculous, so silly. And, and I do not want to lose. And so feared it is. by the it three is. of us. Yeah, so uh, I ended up on Better hope there's not a tongue hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I made sure of that. So, uh, yeah, last week I was able to win. Jason at the bottom. Two in a row, Jay. I know. You uh, ready to do it? I don't think i've done you're cooling off often. yeah <laughs> he's cooling <laughs> off wheel of shame oh baby oh i better not lose this week let's go <laughs> let's spin that wheel all right we got uh happy Ge trees geezer viking and that's oh no we did has poppy's papa Poppy's Papa. Poppy's Papa. Poppy's Papa. Oh, th is this the troll? Oh, Pop, troll Pop, Poppy. Poppy. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Jason, you're going to have to take your old uh, your hat okay. off. Okay, so he's got the hair. There's another piece. Oh, is that a mustache? <laughs> oh, we got a mustache right. for you, Jason. <laughs> oh, and we have eyebrows. <laughs> Mike, you want to help him out with these? <laughs> your hand these over. Are they ready to go? They're ready to go. You got some okay. eyebrows. You're going to have to take the glasses off, Jason. I'm sorry. Oh, maybe not. Oh, oh yeah. A lot of sticky Turn on my up. face. Yeah, buddy. You look good. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, there it is. <laughs> the camera can't even the hold camera the camera zoomed it in. There, got you. All right. Oh, yeah. We're, we're back at it. I am enjoying the winning part. Oh, yeah. How about you, Jay? You enjoying this segment? I am loving it man am i loving this segment all right we're into the lineups for week three let's see if we can get it done again jason you look spectacular oh, thank Goodness you gracious. this is one of my favorites pink is my color oh you look good um who's the uh boxing promoter oh yeah <laughs> don, 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 don king. king you look like you got some don king yeah. hair right now version. 
All right, my quarterback this week going into week three. Draft Do we teams, all have the same quarterback? I've got Kirk Cousins. We, uh, I have Kirk Cousins. I have Kirk Cousins. Yeah. I mean, all it's, right. I don't know how you. I tried to go away from it knowing that it would probably be commonly. Can't. But 6,900 Kirk Cousins. Yeah, it's in, very nice. In a cash game format, which this is what we're playing because there's only the three of us. I don't know how you move away from Kirk. Exactly. So we all have Kirk Cousins. Uh, my running backs. I am I am going with the same two I ran out last week. I'm going B. John Robinson at 7,800 and Jameer Gibbs at 6,600. Okay. They're in the same matchup. The targets will be flowing, and that's where I'm going. Okay. At running back, I've got a couple of guys I am counting on to do big things. Tony Pollard in a oh. massive – he was uh, he was in my lineup for so long, but I did move away. Uh, eight thousand, right? Eight thousand. So he is expensive uh, playing against Arizona and Travis Etienne at a very nice sixty nine hundred. Uh, those two running backs are going to be stalwarts for my roster, and that uh, that's about five hundred more than my pair. So you spin up on the best matchups of the week. Some favorite favorite teams, Mike. Uh, Travis Etienne will be a wash for the two of us. Jason, I also will be enjoying his services as my start of the week, and then. Ken Bone Walker the third, sixty two hundred against Carolina. Heavy, heavy home favorites. It should be delightful. Well, that's fun. We've got some live players there at the running back position, other than you two sharing Mr. Etienne. Mm -hmm. My wide receivers. Uh, give me a guess. <laughs> Justin Jefferson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Justin yeah. We all do we all you. have Justin of Jefferson? Of course we do. We don't. What? I wasn't able to afford him. <laughs> you you have Kirk in and you didn't stack? I did okay. stack. Okay, you went okay. Okay. Well, I have Jefferson at 9,300. That blows my mind, though. I have Keenan Allen at 7,600 in the same matchup. Yeah, that that was my original lineup. I had those exact guys, Just, Justin Jefferson and Keenan Allen. Um, in order to afford my running backs, I went with I, – I still got one more. You got one more. I still right. got one more I got to share. Who is it? Justin Jefferson, Keenan Allen, and Tank Dell at 3,600. Ooh, so I originally had those three. Um, but I pivoted to afford more on my running backs. I went with Jordan Addison instead of Justin Jefferson, paid down there at only 5500 I feel like he's mispriced. Uh, I wanted the value over Justin Jefferson, but I do have Keenan Allen, and I do have Tank Dell. Do you really? I do. Okay. I, hey, I, That's a bit unfortunate. I knew we would all have Tank Dell. Cause oh, really? Because he's 3600 man. And like a player who can get 10 targets for that price, okay. full PPR, you have to go with it. Uh, I have Justin Jefferson, of course. I had Keenan Allen for a long time, but I made some moves to to adjust the roster. So I have his counterpart. I have Mike Williams at 6,000. So that will be a very enjoyable situation where we are shouting either Keenan or Mike Williams. Well, or, and Jefferson and Addison. Sure. So that'll be fun. I don't like being the one that doesn't have <laughs> Justin Jefferson officially on record saying I will everything you're saying in this outfit right now <laughs> it carries just, it's got more weight to it yeah could mm. you you got to fix your mustache a little bit oh, there you gotta bring, bring the one side down a little bit I can't, uh, it's stuck to me <laughs> okay uh well here's my fine look I it costs a lot to go cousins Bijan, Gibbs Jefferson and Allen so now we're looking at the bargains my tight end at 2700 is the pass-catching tight end for the Washington Commanders. It's Cole Turner. Oh. Taking Cole Turner in the absence of Logan Thomas. I was waiting to hear on that. Definitively, it came just in time. Logan Thomas out, Cole Turner in. What Buffalo is, pass what, rush. What's the price there? 2700 Oh, right. He's deliciously okay. cheap. Yeah. Uh, again, it was very hard to afford what I had at the top of this lineup, which makes 3200 Nelson Aguilar. He's my flex play. I don't think Beckham's out there. And unfortunately, that left me with only one defense I could afford. One. That's it's always fun. Arizona. Yeah. At home it, against Dallas. I'll be hoping for they've got nine sacks through two weeks. Hoping for one defensive play, one tip pass, one miraculous <laughs> special teams play. But uh, Arizona put up 19 points in this uh, DraftKings in Week One against Washington. I'll be praying. Yeah. yeah. That's all I could do to afford what I had. Yeah, I I. Uh... Uh, it'll time will tell here one of us is gonna win um i've got a, another cheap tight end as well only two hundred dollars more than yours at 2900 oh no is it durham it is durham yeah. Smythe. he is everyone's tight end is he in yours yeah all right well so i'm we, just saying globally yes yes um i have the jets defense at 2800 against the new england patriots they're at home and uh, well, another great value to me uh amari cooper 
who I think has a great matchup uh, at home against the Tennessee Titans, is only 5,700. So Smythe, Cooper, and the Jets. Smythe, the Jets. Zay Flowers will be my difference maker at the flex position. It's another team we'll be rooting for, yeah. for a different Flowers wide versus receiver. I mean, you want to, again, talking about mispricing, 5,400 for Mr. Zay Flowers at home. Should be soaking up the those first read targets. I, guys, I'm very happy with the squad. And that's like I had to give a big shout out thanks to Jason because he started mm. he started strutting yeah. in the office and he said, I did it. I built the perfect DraftKings lineup. And I was done. And I said, Oh. Well, he looks I'll, like a man who built the perfect lineup. So I I went back into the laboratory, changed things up, and my, my lineup is infinitely better. Uh well look, here's some uh some more news from Al Borland. You said that your uh, eyebrows and mustache are not going to come off easily. <laughs> oh, I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. Well, the nice thing is that they are currently on hair, so I will oh, have no. to rip oh. them off. The of... adhesive it came with was was subpar, so we, we upgraded. Did you a epoxy oh, these, or what did you? Oh, goodness gracious! <laughs> Do we got any like baby oil around here? Well, uh, we'll worry about that yeah, later. We'll yeah. figure it out. That was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That is the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. And uh, I know Al was over there on the Sportsbook last night hoping for five more yards from uh, Darren Waller. That's why I called him flippers. And uh, as that last drive got going, we put the sharp objects away. <laughs> And uh, he did not get those last night. But um, you did nail all the other parts of the parlay. Good job. Yeah. I did, yeah. Five or six legs. Paid, all right. Paid nothing, but still had a good week. Yeah, well, we're we're done with the show. Jason, you're looking special. And I'm not taking it off, so the adhesive the is joke. no problem. Join Mike on Sunday, ballerslive.com. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.